My family and I have been surviving on early withdrawals from our retirement accounts, while the FBI has ignored my request for approval to obtain outside employment during the review of my security clearance. We have lost our federal health insurance coverage, and there's apparently no end in sight. I'm hopeful scrutiny from Congress and from the Inspector General will deter the FBI from abusing the security clearance process to retaliate against others the way it's retaliated against me. Former FBI agent Marcus Allen alleging retaliation at the House Select Subcommittee hearing investigating the weaponization of the federal government Thursday discuss discussing special counsel John Durham's report on alleged FBI wrongdoing. The panel chaired by Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan examining whistleblowers alleged abuses at the agency or rather how they've been retaliated against and how the FBI has handled those situations. We're going to break this down now with our legal panel. We have ACLJ Executive Director Jordan Seculo, along with distinguished professor at Toro University, Dane Rosenbaum, and of course our special guest and Newsmax contributor Mark Halperin with us. Um, Dane, I want to kick it off with you. We heard a lot of personal stories from these whistleblowers talking about how this has impacted their families, their ability to move forward. What's their recourse? It's a really good question, right, because the FBI has clearly covered their tracks. They've already said that there was cause for dismissal. So you have a he said, she said, you know, uh, uh, encounter here. Uh, they're saying, the FBI is saying that there was reasons for the termination. And what we're hearing today was very open uh, expressions of, of being weapon of a weaponized FBI. Remember, you know, these people caused F the FBI tremendous d damage, you know, because they're going against the very official story uh, that basically says that all people who were at January 6 were domestic terrorists and white supremacists. And these men are saying, well, wait a minute, I, I don't think we had probable cause on a number of these investigations. We, as the Durham report said, we didn't investigate with all our analytical tools or use proper analytical uh, rigor. Uh, we were tainted by confirmation bias. We were sort of told to go after a particular story instead of, uh, of holding our oath to taking us where the investigation led. Remember what I stands for in FBI. It stands for investigation. And what they're really saying is, I don't think we properly investigated it. And every time we tried to point that out, we were punished for doing so. Jordan, I want to talk about the Durham report for a minute because mm -hmm. it seems to implicate a lot of people that knew that there was faulty information. There was no basis right. to launch Crossfire Hurricane. Uh, some of the individuals that knew about it were former pres U.S. President Barack Obama, Joe Biden as, as vice president. Um, you had uh, Congressman Adam Schiff, who continued while he was working on the Hill to push and perpetuate the narrative, uh, despite knowing full well that it was that it was not based on anything. And then separately, you have the letter that was sent out by 51 former intelligence officials dismissing the Hunter Biden laptop story as Russian collusion. So or Russian disinformation, rather. Um, is there a legal way to hold anybody accountable or is it dismissal? You know, it was, it's interesting. This I want to start this point. You know, the Mueller investigation, which was over Russia, they we worked on that for President Trump. They knew in about a week and a half, Bob Mueller's team, that there was nothing to do with Russia there. So they went to what we call process crimes, obstruction. Did you lie under oath, oh, testimony? And then we saw, again, Durham uh, do the same thing, uh, which is basically, uh, listen, we know that there are bad actions here, but are there laws on the books that I can actually prosecute or do I need to rely on process crimes? And when he did, he wasn't very successful. So though I'm glad the report totally vindicates President Trump uh, we are working at the ACLJ with members of Congress now on tightening up. I'm not a big proponent of new laws and new criminal laws, but in this matter, if we're going to have faith and trust in our elections, and you brought up the CIA letter with the 51 former intel agents who were being recruited by a current intel agent at the CIA, that's election interference. And for Americans to have trust in these institutions again, if we ever can, uh, we've got to clean them up. And I do think there might be a legal 
a loophole here that doesn't give the prosecutors who want to do the right thing the ability to get these people uh, to actually uh, uh, justice, to actually be able to prosecute them, not for lying, not for tax fraud, these side issues, but for the main issue, election interference in the United States of America. Mark, uh, Secretary of State Antony Blinken was also indicted sort of um, in that letter from 51 former FBI officials because it was a communication between him and the and Mike Morrell at the time that led to the draft and approval of that letter dismissing the Hunter Biden laptop story as information. So we're talking about a current government official. I hate to speculate on this or to ask a hypothetical question, but what do you think we would be seeing on the left if the shoe was on the other foot? Calls for resignation and impeachment. When people say, you know, they haven't proved the case, there's no there there, this isn't going anywhere. What we already know is so outrageous, so outrageous that these intelligence officials would be used by a campaign to put their reputations, the prestige of the organizations they worked for, uh, on the line in order to state something that they knew wasn't true or, or, or had strong reasons to believe wasn't true. So I think there needs to be accountability for these folks. And, and some of them have been testifying privately, as you know, on the Hill. Be curious to see when they come in publicly if they tell the story involving the Secretary of State, the Clinton campaign, and, and the current, as was said, the current CIA official, or at the time current CIA official, who recruited them for this effort that was clearly, again, using the prestige of the intelligence agencies for, to help one political party. All right. Jordan Seculo, Thane Rosenbaum, of course, Mark Halperin will be sticking around with us. Thank you, panel. Coming up Thank after you. the break, we'll turn